Welcome to this tutorial about Software Protector, and today we're going to look at machine code locking. And this is a quite a new feature, which was added in SKGL 203 and in Software Protector version 103. And this feature basically allows you to restrict the usage of a key. So basically, uh, it restricts the key for a specific machine or a specific computer, and it makes it almost impossible to use the key on different machines other than specified by the license. And in, uh, today we're more likely to be using a software protector to solve this task uh, rather than looking at the code. Uh, we'll see if we can if we'll have time with that. So uh, the first thing we have to do is to of course open Visual Studio because now I'm going to um, and also we need to open software protector and uh, I just have it installed already otherwise the link is specified below where you can download software protector and then we need to so we need to have the window the coding window to the left side and here we have the software protector so machine code locking is found uh, might be found in the, in the second tab and as you can see, by default, there is no such machine code calculated for you. And that's because machine code is something personal, and it's something that you should keep uh, um, by yourself. And of course, uh, if you are a software distributor, or like if you are an application developer, you really need to have that code in order to d make keys for that specific machine. So in that case, you're, uh, the user is allowed to give you this machine code. And uh, t today we're going to look at just how we can retrieve this um, <coughs> key using uh, the API. And the API, the, the download link for the API is also lo located below. Um, and uh, so let's just look. We're going to work with Visual Basic EDI. So just press here. And uh, we don't need to have a spec specific name. And uh, the last thing here is to add the API. Uh, let's see, and the link to API is also available down below the video here. Uh, add reference. You go to browse, and you need to find the project. And I have it in my download directory because I, because I downloaded it um, currently. Uh, so let's see where do we have it here, and download the API. It's called skgl.dll. That's simple. Uh, so, in order to retrieve a key, uh, some machine key, and uh, without looking here, we'll just add some la add a label. Uh, that's good. And we'll have a calculate button. Or why should we have it? We can just keep keep it to a label like this. Uh, and then we'll have a second label should basically say that this is a machine code. So <clears throat> this is added easier easily by typing the machine code. Let's see if this will be good enough. Yeah, it is good enough. So and here's the key. I'll just mark it without anything uh, without any space there. So we just have a empty box. One thing to notice here is that you can access machine code using either sqgl.generate class or using the sqgl.validate class. It doesn't matter because it's a shared um, property and you can get it in both directions basically. But here's how it looks like. So we have a simple code, we declare sqgl as a new <coughs> sqgl.generate and then we specify label2 uh, and .text and that is equal to sqgl.machinecode. So if we launch this application, we are going to see <coughs> some sort of code. And now let's see. Let, let's compare uh, the code we have here and the code we get here. And obviously those are the same. And <coughs> it would be hard to just show you another machine code, but if you are going to do the same, you obviously want to get the same key. Or in most cases you want to get the same key, but sometimes mm, because there are more computers in the world than uh, there are number of combinations. This is just a 
simple code <coughs> to distinguish between uh, two uh, different computers. Uh, and as you can see, they are shown in you. You can get them in both in both ways. So let's just close this. And this was about about how you can get it using your application because this can obviously be placed in an about box and you require a user to uh, uh, look in the about box and say uh, tell you the machine code and uh, uh, otherwise you can just put it at another place or there's also an opportunity to just go to softwareprotect.glissver.net and then if you press demo and then you if you look at the fourth uh, point you will see a program machine ID for software protector and that's because if you just want to know the machine code <coughs> of that user, you just get a message, and here you see the machine code. Two different ways, and they they both work the same. And it's not that much installations to perform. You just launch an application. Nothing is required. Um, so once you have the machine code by the user, so we'll just pretend that seven uh, seven one six. Five, five is our machine code. Once you know the machine code, you can enter it in the machine code box. Now let's now focus on software protector. You can enter it in machine code box. <coughs> so seven one six five five. And now, if you return to the main, you will see a box here which tells you that machine locking is activated, and that's what we want to uh, want to see there. And Obviously, we can't generate more than one key, and that's not because there is a restriction. It's just if you generate the key with the, with the same machine code, uh, you will obviously only get one key, uh, because that key will be identical to to that machine. So, otherwise, it works the same. You can set time, the amount of days it's left. You have the uh, option to choose. Uh, different features if you like that and, of, and now we can just press generate in order to see how it works validate now you'll see box here that this key is only valid on the machine you have specified in machine code tab so <coughs> you can still validate the key so if I would just change this to something else like 9 and if I go back and validate it again I will still see the, the, uh, the key I will still be able to use it in software protector because you need to know if that's valid or if the key is valid uh, but then when you implement this into your application then you will need to be careful about the machine code if you uh, want to use this feature so if we just press ok and then we can keep this I think yeah and we turn this to 6 I think no it's 5 my, my machine code is 71655 generate the key again. Now we can't generate more keys than this. <coughs> That's the point. Uh, so the SQGL API is made so easy easily because it's it really facili facilitates the way we can check if that uh, machine code is on the right machine. So if we just look at this code and uh, here's the code. So what we can see is that we it's basically it's, it's the same procedure we uh, enter the secret phase and in this case we don't have any secret phase I think no we didn't assign any and <clears throat> we assign the key and now if you look at my f new form I have added a text box uh, and a button and uh, so we need to assign where we can find the key and then it's a basically the same way we want to validate the key if it's valid we want to, and if it's not, of course, then we will prompt that it's an invalid key. Uh, then we uh, have another condition to ask if the uh, if the key is on the right machine. So it's basically SQGL dot is on right machine, and if it if that's the case, then you will get a uh, a good box. Otherwise, we won't get anything at all, or we'll get the error message. Um, <coughs> So let's see how this works, and I hope, hopefully, I have the same machine code as my computer. So yeah, and that appears to be the case. Again, so once again, copy the key, 
paste it and validate it. Your key is valid, and that's good. And as you can see, uh, one probably uh, probably not the limitation of machine code, uh, but it might in some cases take longer time to validate a key if it's uh, it uses this feature, and that's because we need to collect uh, the information of the, about the computer, and we need to calculate the checksum. And basically, this machine code is a checksum of the entire computer, so it's like a fingerprint. And uh, <clears throat> the uh, the machine code also takes some time to calculate, and that's because and that's why it takes a long time to validate a key, but not to generate. The generation of a serial key using machine code feature doesn't take any longer because it's not a significant change to the key it's more when we want to validate the information where we can see some time uh, changes but but this is how it works so this key appears to be valid and let's just take a case if I would take a key that's not for my machine so if I take entirely different number here and uh, and as you can see, they are different. <laughs> and uh, generate the key again. Copy the key. And uh, once again, we'll launch the application. Paste the key. Sorry, but the key is not on the right computer. And if you would like to, you could just avoid this long code here and just uh, remove everything. And. Uh, create an AND and just say SQL is on right machine. So now it will just say that the key is invalid. Uh, and that's also the case here because if you don't want to show what's what's the problem with the key, just say it's invalid key. Uh, of course if you'd like to uh, tell it somehow you could add some number that only you can understand so that when someone calls you, calls you not to ask what's what the problem is here, then you can identify the problem, but not that much that the user can do that, because if the user can just see what's the problem, uh, uh, actually I don't think it b makes any big uh, difference though, but if, uh, if you do not have any need of uh, letting the user know if that the key is uh, it's basically because they used on another machine then you can just keep it really simple like like I did really small piece of code but of course you can uh, uh, expand the code here as well it, it it's a matter of uh, uh, choice here matter of yeah and uh, <clears throat> that was it about software protectors machine code feature and don't forget to enter a password before you you generate any key because the password is the most significant part in uh, key generation. Thank you very much, and please subscribe to this video if you liked it. Yeah, thank you, and see you.